There's two types of triangles we're going to use. The, like I said, you don't have to copy them. We're going to need to just pay attention to it. The two triangles we're going to be looking at, one of them is called isosceles, and the other one's going to call, be called equilateral. So those are the two that we're going to be working with. Now, I said triangles, so let me draw two triangles. I mean, there's one, and there's a second one. For isosceles, if you notice, it starts with the word I, right? When, so when you think of the word I, you think of a person, right? I. So a person, one thing that we have is two legs. And if I stand over, I have a triangle, right? Two sides of my legs, and then the floor makes a third side. Right? So there's a triangle. I can move my legs over, and there's a different <coughs> triangle. And then um, sometimes the bottom side, you know, in this case the floor, the one made by the by floor, sometimes it's very small. If I put my feet together, sometimes it's a little bit big. So the third side varies, but there's two sides in every hand. In my case, my legs. You notice two sides were equal, and the other, but the third one varies. So when I, I saw this triangle, two sides, I'm going to put the two, two marks, two sides are equal. Once again, the third one, the third one varies, right? It could be the same or not. But the interesting part of the isosceles triangle, not only two sides are equal, but two angles as well. The base angle, so I'm going to come over and say these two angles. So two sides are equal and the two base angles are equal. Right. We've heard the word base before, or when, we, when you guys talk about area of square before, you guys learned base and height for area of rectangles. So the, the word base is something you guys have heard before, but base is what you stand on. Sometimes it's a line, line segment like my triangle, sometimes it's going to be a different shape. My case, my base are my feet. Even if I lay down, if I put myself sideways, if I'm laid down, my base are still my feet. So the base is not always at the bottom. Alright guys, so once again, the two legs are equal and the two base angles are equal as well. The idea though, for you to call the base angles at the bottom, you have to send the triangle on the legs. On your paper, the triangle sometimes is standing, sometimes it's sideways. What I mean with sideways is I can just put my triangle like this and I'm going to say these two sides are equal. So the base angles are these two. Again, if you, if, like this one, obviously, imagine rotating it. If you stand it on the leg, so if you stand it on the leg, the two angles are the bottom. But keep in mind that I said, if you stand it on the leg. Does that make sense? <coughs> okay, so for equilateral, if you notice, it starts similar to the word equal. And the word lateral means side. So equilateral, we're going to think equal sides. All the sides are equal. So I'm just going to go, all the sides are equal, but the interesting part of equilateral, all angles are equal as well. <coughs> we know that the three angles of a triangle add up to 180. I'm saying all those are equal, so how big is each of them? <laughs> the same, which is the number. You guys should be able to figure out the number. Each of those is 60 degrees. <coughs> and they're all the same, they all add up to 180, and they each of them should be 60. Alright, now let's take a look at our work, so that way we get to practice a little bit with our work. Let's take a look at question number one. Some questions like those at the very beginning are going to be simple. If you notice, I have it with the base angles there, so my two side angles are going to be so. And I'm dealing with an isosceles triangle. Because two base angles are equal, so if one side is x, the other side is 7, how big is x? 7. 7. Like I said, some questions would be that simple. Looking at question number 2, see how all the angles are equal? So I'm dealing with an equilateral, 
which means all those sides are equal. How big is x? x equals 8. And so all those sides are equal. But then some of them are pretty simple like that. But uh, let me skip to question number... Um, let me take a look at question number 9 instead. Remember, I came in and I said, if you said that all the legs, the base angles are equal. So if I look at question number 9, it is standing on the legs, so the base angles are these two. How big is x? X equals 75. Because those two angles are equal. So might as well just come and say x equals 75. So let me take a look at number 10. Right? If you send that on the leg, number 10, the two base angles are going to be those two. Remember, I said, if you send it, so you might need to flip your paper. You might need to rotate a little. The two base angles are those that I marked. So I'm not going to come and say x equals 96, because they're, they're not quite going to be 96. Do we know any information about this third angle, the one at the top? And we do know it. What do we know about that angle? Besides being a cube, or do we know another angle at the same side? No. Remember, if I have my, remember the reason why I marked it because they're base angles, right? What's the what's the deal with the base angles in an isosceles triangle? Okay, so, so okay, you're, you're in the right track. So you're dividing it by two because you're saying these two angles are the same, right? Yeah. The two that I marked. So one thing that we can say is if one angle is x, can we just call the other one x? Sure. Yeah. Because they're the same thing? Yeah. And then one thing that we learned is if, we, if I add the three angles of a triangle, x plus x plus 96, that's equal to 180, right? No. The rest you can finish it. If you came in, you said subtract 96, and then divide it. So, so you are on the right track, sir. My idea, like obviously this, you guys should finish it. I'm not going to finish number 10 for you. But my idea, the difference of my questions number 9 and 10, is that sometimes I might give you, I might ask you guys for x being a base angle, and I give you the other base angle. And you know they're equal to each other. Sometimes, like looking at number 10, I will give you a base angle, some information about a base angle, but the other angle is not the same. So sometimes, like number 9, I'm dealing with two base angles. Number 10, one of them is a base, the other one is not. But you know that remaining angle is the base, so copy it as the other base. That makes sense. Can you do the one that's Let's take a look at question number 11. Looking at the remaining angle, because one angle is x, the other angle is 31. Looking at the remaining angle, is it x or is it 31? 31. And then the reason why, because you notice the triangle is standing on the side, and it's standing on the legs, so the two base angles are equal. All right, so for us to be able to solve for x, I'm just going to go x plus 31 plus 31 is equal to 1a. And then the rest, like I said, I'll let you guys finish it. But let me do take a look at number 12. Looking at number 12, can I just come over and say x equals 31? Yeah, no, maybe, why not, yeah? Yeah, because yeah. the two the angles that are base angles are those that I just marked, which are the ones that I'm talking about there. So might as well let them equal each other. So x equals 31. So number 12 is a little bit simple. Number 11 is not that simple. Okay, so if the x is at the top, then you have to do the same thing. Is that what it's well, I guess we have to do the equation. I don't want to say it's in the top because I could rotate the triangle. Let's see about my desk. Right now. 
Okay, your question is, do we do this by Kedusha 180? We do it if what I'm giving to begin with is one base angle and the other one is not a base angle. And that's what I was giving at the beginning. One of the angles is a base angle and the other one is not. Remember, when I'm talking about base angles, are the two angles that are equal to each other. Number 12, we don't have to do the equation because the two angles that I'm giving both are the base angles. I don't want to say on the top because I could spin the, the plan. Like number 11, I could have write it like this. There's x, there's 31. And the x is out on top, but it's the same question. Does that make sense? You notice if I give you that picture, it's the exact same question, but the x is not on top. I know it's a little hard to see it because uh, I've been struggling with my other geometry classes. The thing is, if I, the two angles that I'm giving, the information that I give you, like working on number 12, the information, or the, the two angles that I have information for are the base angles, just let them equal each other. All right, like number 12, x equals 31. Because you have information, the information that I gave you is on the base angle. But looking at number 11, the information that I gave you, one of them was a base angle, the other one was not. Okay, so at 13, we can do it like really well. 13, let's take a look. Looking at number 13, my base angles are these two. The ones I just marked. And remember, what I mean with base angles are, if you spin the triangle, and you send it on the two sides that are equal, the triangles on the bottom. So you do have to spin your paper a little bit. So for this angle, the third angle, do I write X or do I write a hand? It's going to be X. It would be X. So those two are equal. So for me to solve for X, having the three angles, I'm just going to go X plus X plus 100 is equal to 180. The idea, once again, if I have a triangle, two sides are equal, and I do send it on the side, the base angles are equal. Remember, when I stood up here, and I showed you guys with my legs, I was putting my legs, I was sending on my legs, the base angles, the angles of the bottle, are those that are equal. So if it will help if you flip your paper. I cannot do that here, because I'm not going to flip the screen. But you can, you can rotate your paper. Looking at number 14, you guys see this measurement here? So it, I know it's an equilateral, but just because of those two, I can say it's an isosceles. Equilaterals are also part of isosceles. So I know because it's an isosceles, do I let these two angles equal each other? Yes. If I can let those two angles equal each other, so how big is that? 60. When the two angles that I give you are isosceles, the work is easy. When the angle that I give you, one of them is the base, the other one is not, that's when you have to add the three angles equal to one angle. Does that make sense? Alright. I know that one is the X is right here. 130 is this corner right here. Now this third angle this third corner, is that X or is that 130? X. So for you to solve for X, we're gonna go X plus X plus 130 is equal to 1.
Number 15 is X 272. No. No. Okay. So is that equal for this third angle? Is this X or is this 72? 72. 72. So for you to solve for X, add the three angles and equal to one angle. Now if the triangle is centered on the left, the base angle, the bottom angles are equal. Alright, so this takes us up until 24. Any questions up until 24? Yeah. Okay, take a look at it right now. So, any questions up until 24? Alright, number 25. If you notice, it says the measure of angle 2 is x plus 36. So, these two are my angles. This is not 2 degrees. This is a name. So instead of 2, let me replace that. I'm going to replace that x, the 2, with x plus 36. So all it's telling me is replace 2 with that information. So once again, that's not 2 degrees, because you don't see the degree symbol. So that 2 degrees is the angle 2. I'm using 2 as a name. So this angle is x plus 36. Now, the third angle, well, first of all, can, is x plus 36 equal to 120? Are those two equal? No. no. All right, so the third angle, is it 120 or is it x plus 36? X plus 36. So for us to be able to solve for x at the three angles, x plus 36, plus x plus 36 plus 120 is equal to 180. Plus. Notice how x plus 36, I have it twice, because the base angles repeat. So that's why I have it twice. For number 26, that 2, right, let me change that number 2 for 8x minus 4. Now, my question to you is, is 8x minus 4 and 6 equal to each other? <coughs> yes. Yes. We could have seen it as this were the two base angles, or we could have seen it that it was an equilateral, so all, everything is equal. So yeah, 8x minus 4 equals 60, and then you can finish the rest. Very good. How do you have that outside for All right. So once again, that number two in your triangles, 25 and on, that number two is not two degrees. It's, it says replace that two with the information I'm giving you on top. Okay, I didn't finish 25 or 26. I'm leaving it for you guys to finish it on your own. Question 27, that 2 that is right here at the bottom right, that 2, I'm going to replace it with x plus 71. Remember, the information on top is what he replaced for 2. Angle two. Now, my question to you, is x plus 71 equal to 60 or not? We have a equilateral triangle. All the sides are equal. So is x plus 71 equal to 60? Yeah. Yes. Well, the angles are equal as well. And I'll let you guys finish that one. Let's take a look at number 29. This 2, let me replace it with x plus 41. My question to you now. Is x plus 41 and 30 equal to each other? No. Yeah. I heard no, maybe, and yes. <laughs> and now I heard and I don't know. So it's over here. So now my question is, if... <laughs> no. No? Yes? <coughs> you see how my le the legs are right here? It is standing on the legs. The two angles are at the bottom are these two. So yes, they're equal to each other. <laughs> so x plus 41 is equal to 30. Sorry, guys. Can you 
Whenever you deal with the base angle only, like in this study too, you don't need the third angle. Any questions? 19? All right. <laughs> See how the, those two faces are the same? So that means these two sides are the same. The two sides are the same. Remember, if, if you put the two angles at the bottom, the two sides that it's standing on are those two sides. So because they're the same, I'm just going to come and say 2x plus 35 is equal to 3x. And then work it out. Work good.